Okay. Okay, so uh, this is uh, my ThinkPad here, right here. So let's go through the specifications first. Uh. So this is uh, not, a really, really, not really a new ThinkPad. Uh. It's released really, really in 2012, but I think the specs are still quite reasonable. Uh. Yeah, i7, but it's a third generation one. Okay, so uh, I was using this ThinkPad actually second hand. Uh. Then I, I got it because I wanted to sub, I have a burner laptop you know, for those experimentation one. But you don't want to buy the top the top line model in case you, something happens to it, yeah. Okay, so I was using it as per normal. Then recently, right, I encountered this uh, particular hardware article at the start of the year. Okay, so you see, uh, February, <laughs> February twenty nineteen. Okay, so this guy, okay, let's show you that. Uh, he made this. This is the uh, title of his post was ThinkPad T four thirty S IPS screen upgrade. Okay. So let's look at what he says, the key point here. Unlike most laptops, the screen is genuine grade A rubbish. It is a TN display. It's the kind that changes color as you look at it from different angles, and it's one of the worst TN displays you ever see in your life. It's absolute crap. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of interest in replacing it. And now in 2019, there's a pretty much a boat installation that solves the problem for you by putting in a very nice IPS panel. So I actually agree with this guy. The screen of my laptop was is really shit, but then I did not like think there was a possible solution for it. I just okay, I just take it lah, whatever lah. Okay, then I saw this article. Then I was like, eh, then I decided to read further lah. Okay, okay, let me let me continue first ah. Okay, so he said TN screens were very lousy and the IPS screen is good. Okay, so, uh, so of course I'll do some. I decided to research a bit. What exactly is this do? Because I wasn't familiar with the display technologies ah. Okay. So I googled, I'm not sure whether I can explain it properly, but I'll try. Okay, so uh, TN display stands for Twisted Pneumatic Display. Okay, so it's a form of LCD technology. Okay, so you can see this thing here, right? Okay, these two diagrams. One of them indicates that when there is no power supplied to the liquid crystal, another one indicates when there's power supplied. So for the first column, right, this is when there's no power supplied. When the, there's no voltage supplied, right, this is how the liquid crystal is arranged. It's in the 90 degree angle. So the polarized light actually goes through like this. Okay? So when you apply power, right, this entire uh, rods right, all line up like that. And it blocks. The polarized light will not fall in a 90 degree angle and it gets blocked right here. Okay? Yeah. So the characteristics of this uh, type of display technology is that it's very fast refresh rate, it's very cheap but it has very poor viewing angles and poor color, okay? So the poor color, right, oh yeah, poor color is because of this. The crystal at the edge is not fully straight. Yeah, okay? Then the, according to the article I read, it's because of the optical properties of this kind of liquid crystal. When you look on the side, it's not that good, okay? So let's compare this to the in-plane switching displays. This IPS displays actually used in many of our modern LCD displays, okay? so. For the first uh, picture, right, is when the voltage is off. So you can see everything line up like that. When the voltage is on, it's line up like that. Okay? So the compared to this diagram, you see, the previous one, there's some, it's not totally straight, right? But here, right, it's the entire thing shifts. And it's very nice, like one nice column in one single direction. Okay? So because of this, right, it's a bit more expensive, but it has good viewing angles and very good color. Okay, well, but a bit slower refresh rate because like, they say that it's hard, it takes a bit slow, a longer period of time to rotate all these rods compared to the previous one. You just need to straighten all of this. Okay, so I decided to replace my LCD uh, display based on uh, what the guy suggested. Lah. So he said, okay, go to eBay, look for this particular one. Okay, it apparently is the same size. Okay, same size as my... Uh, it's slightly thinner though, but it still fits. Lah. Okay? But it's not that straightforward because this particular uh, display right, uses a connector called, sorry, it's not mini display board. It's an embedded display board. Okay? Embedded display board. But uh, the motherboard uses something else. It's called LVDS. So immediately, there's a difference in the signaling technology. The motherboard transmits in LVDS, but the display port, the LCD receives as embedded display port. 
So the difference is these two. La. So one technology is basically newer than the other. And the connector type is different. The protocol is also different. One is differential signaling, and the embedded display port is sent in the form of packets. La. So it basically, you cannot just connect the two together. It won't work. So, okay. So you can take a look at here. La. So LVDS, right? It's actually a legacy technology. So you can take a look at the Intel article. They say Intel plans to end support of LVDS in 2013 and VGA in 2015. But well, this article is very old already. Uh. Okay. So in today's, uh, that's why today's technology, today's uh, LCD uh, for on the laptops, right? You don't see them using LVDS anymore. Okay. But this laptop is older. Okay. So let's bring in this thing, this special converter. Okay. So again, this guy says, Go to eBay, apparently someone made a specialized uh, adapter uh, from LVDS to embedded display port. So expensive. Yeah, so expensive. <laughs> yeah, so, and it's specifically for this particular ThinkPad model, T430 and T420, you know. Wow, I, I think that's why the quantity is so low, that's why it's so expensive. Anyway, I decided to get this, lah. okay? I just follow. So, this is, uh, this is my efforts. I, See, you can see my reflection there, sorry. Okay, so you can see I replaced the screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then also uh, that the adap uh, adapter board, right? I found a place to put it here, beside the CPU. Oh. Apparently this place is for a PCI Express, mini PCI Express lock. So it's not occupied, right? I just show it there, boom. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the challenge for me, right, was actually to wire up. Lah, because I needed, okay, see, this is, this is the position of where the motherboard outputs the LVDS yeah, signal. And then the LCD input, right, you can see is somewhere here. So I needed to actually route the cable out here and back again, right? Instead of previously, it was directly go up. Ma. So I had to remove that cooler, the CPU cooler, the fan, then route it below, then route it, and this is a speaker. Ma. I had to route it through the speaker side and put it and go right in. So that's that, and I got a very new screen. So uh, I can show you my the display settings lah, okay? to prove that it's actually 1080p. Okay? 1920 by 1080. Wow. <laughs> Before that, it was 1600 by 900. Okay, so I got, now I got 1080p on my laptop. Okay. So that was the first uh, upgrade I made. The second upgrade is in respect to the keyboard. Lah. So I'm not sure how many of you uh, are ThinkPad fans. Any ThinkPad fans? Do you all know, you all like the keyboard, right? ThinkPad keyboard. ThinkPad keyboards are known to be one of the best in terms of laptop keyboards. Uh. Okay? And the older generation of ThinkPad keyboards are this one, the one at the bottom. So uh, Lenovo, IBM, both of them, they use this keyboard up to 2011. Okay, so the T420 model series, right, was the last one to use this. Then for this point, let's talk about the T430, from 2012 onwards, they use this chiclet or the island style. Uh, very common nowadays. Uh. Okay? So you can immediately you can see there are some differences already. Uh. I personally I'm a more traditional ThinkPad fan, so I was a bit disappointed when they shifted to this <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> right. So I thought, uh, okay, why not? Is it a way to transplant the <laughs> keyboard right wow. to this new one right of course i i mean i give this presentation means successful lah. okay so you can see this is the older picture of my laptop and this is the newer picture yeah so i managed to get this keyboard in okay so i actually uh, of course i followed a guide lah. okay so this is actually a known procedure uh, in thing wiki so the fortunate thing is that the keyboard connector to the motherboard is the same okay uh, they suggested to blank out some lines uh, because the pinout is slightly different, but I, I don't really care. Okay? See, ignoring this thing will cause your keyboard overheating and damage. But then they say some people have done the keyboard replacement without this protective knot and not reported any issues even after years of use. So I was lazy. Okay, never mind, I don't care. You know, this, this connector is actually very small. <laughs> okay, look at this picture, it may seem very big. Uh. I think it's only one centimeter, you know, from this length. It's one centimeter only. So to cover this particular few set of pins, uh, Oh, I think it's very difficult. <laughs> so I, since they say, okay, okay, I don't care. <laughs> okay, let's go. Then uh, there are some uh, 
also some uh, differences in terms of the dimensions. Uh. Okay, so this is called the nub. The nub is supposed to secure the keyboard to your the outside. Casing. Uh, the casing, yeah, the casing of the laptop. But the, because of this, it's slightly different. So you are, it suggests that you shave off some uh, some of the excessive nub. Uh. I, was, I did, uh, so for this one, it's a bit too long. So I actually just use apply and then bend out. <laughs> it works. There's, there's no le le electric, electronic circuit there, so I think it's fine. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, another problem was the function differences. So uh, for the the new and the old keyboard, right? Some of the function lights are different. So for example, the ting light. Okay. If you're not no, don't know what's a ting pad ting light, right? It's actually this. Can you see the light here? Oh. Yeah, this thing, right? This is uh, called a thing light. Oh, for the for the camera, okay. <laughs> okay, can you Okay, so apparently that's for you to see your documents. Uh, why you're using your laptop at night? Okay, so for the for the new keyboard, right? To engage the thing light, right? Is you press function key and space, uh, F N space. But for the old keyboard, right? Is F N pitch up. Okay, then for the keys function F eight, right? On the new keyboard, right, it's actually to dim the brightness of the LCD. For, for the old one, is to toggle the touchpad. Okay, so there is really some differences. Okay, so again, somebody uh, who actually go and wrote a, a code uh, to flash the embedded controller. Okay, okay, let me go back, let me go back to the slide first. So the embedded controller, what does it do? Uh? It controls this stuff. Uh. Okay, so uh, anything that is not controlled by your main CPU. So your fan speed, your lights, include, and including the keyboard. Right. The, so he said the main purpose of this software is to patch the EC on the XX three zero series to make the classic seven row keyboards work. Wow, this person and I and I go and flash. I follow it lah. So this will flash your embedded controller firmware. I did it, and then uh, on reboot you flash it. See, so it's, this is actually a uh, it creates a bootable image. I just put it to my USB drive. Then start from it. Okay, but uh, I think because of this guy's effort, right? You see, as a result of this CV, it looks like new Lenovo phone update files are adding a digital signature. Okay. Okay, let's see. Huh? I think because they realized, hey, this guy is able to uh, change the embedded controller firmware, they decide to lock it down now. Then, a vulnerability was reported in older team system that could allow a user with administrative privilege or physical access to update the embedded controller with unsigned firmware. So now they realize, oh shit, then, it's like, it's, then they can issue this BIOS update. So they tell you, uh, the guy say, uh, please don't update to this virus. Uh. If not, you cannot change the embedded controller anymore. Oh. Mm. It's like those uh, jailbreaking the, the Apple iPhones, right? Yeah, so <laughs> they know already. Okay. But anyway, thanks to the effort of this guy, right, I could get a very nice uh, IPS 1080p screen on my laptop and a classic uh, keyboard layout. So yeah, so that's the, yeah, that's all for my talk. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no need. Really? No need. Yeah, it really just works. Eh. Okay, let's go to the device manager. Ah. Where is the monitor? Yeah. So it identifies as a flex view display. Yeah. Auto. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on inside there. Ah. Yeah. A any more questions? Sorry. Yeah, it will still work. It's just that the the function key will be the previous the based on the newer keyboard. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. How much can we put to convert to I mean on this experiment? How much can we Oh to to I think it's the the keyboard is quite fast. The keyboard is just take out pull back uh, and and the nut thing lah. The it was the harder one was the LCD. Took me a few hours uh, to find an optimum way to route the cable. I mean uh, this one is I show you the final answer. Uh. Yeah, this one. So at first I was like wondering where to put uh. I didn't notice this portion at first. I was thinking, do I really need to go to the extent of take, of taking out the fan, or I have to take out the wireless card, <laughs> or put in my CD-ROM drive? Okay, this laptop has a CD-ROM drive. Uh. Yeah, it's old enough to have a, a CD-ROM drive. So I was thinking, 
if that's really the last result, I have to put it there already. <laughs> yeah, so that one took me a one hour experimentation that I saw this portion there. Okay, so you saw, okay, let's go to eBay. Yeah. Let's see this. So this screen, about approximately $60. Okay, delivery about $80. So this one, this adapter costs more than the screen itself. Yeah, about $90. <laughs> because I, okay, this I think probably is a very uh, niche item, uh, but for the LCD screen, I think it's quite common. That's why. Did you reverse engineer the? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I only bought one, uh, so I didn't want to damage it. <laughs> 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 then, <laughs> if I reverse engineer, then not, <laughs> then it's ninety dollars. <laughs> no. Uh. Totally worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, okay. I did explain why the I get this specific model of laptop. I mean, this is our scope of this talk. La. So this T430 laptop, right, has an express card slot. Uh, wiki. See? Who makes express card? Yeah, yeah, who makes? Uh, I, I got use. Uh. So, so, okay, so you can see what's back. It has an express card slot. This is the last ThinkPad model to have it, to have it the, last, the last generation to have an express card slot. I use that because the express card slot allows you to have certain more fine control over certain pins. For example, you want to do, I have a parallel port card, right? To able to control the pin out directly. If you use a USB one, you don't have that fine control. You can, you can control by the memory address. So I have experiments like that. And this laptop is the last of its kind to have that. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Okay, uh, then thanks. Okay. <laughs> oh, you